Hello you multi. Manx Mountain Lions. Rrr. I think that's referring to my couple little Manx Moggies that I have occasionally popping into view here in the Bothy during my reviews. And a big thank you to Kaiser Hog, or at Kaiser Hog, for the mob mention, introducing Ralphie Review 1034, in which I am presenting a little mini series for the summer of 2024 from independent bottlers. And I'm kind of making a kind of um, a point of never being too far away from independent bottlers on my channel for too long. Even although independent bottlers generally are not widely available on the global market, let me tell you, mop mates, I can see that visibly changing now because awareness leads to demand and demand leads to distributors seeing opportunities to start to import um, independent bottlings because the demand is there. And the reason for the demand is very, very simple. It's to do with the calibre and authenticity of the experience delivered by independent bottlers, which is often, although not always, but often not actually available from officially official bottlings, particularly by mainstream brands. So, let's take this a little bit further now. I'm going to introduce... Oh, what a squeaky cork! A rather delicious single malt. And I'm going to tell you the story about how I, how I bought this as well. Does that look like natural colour? Does, does that look like a natural colour? There we go. That... Hang on, let's me. I've seen a wee theatrical opportunity. That, malt mates, is natural colour. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was entered. I found that entertaining. I don't know about you. Now, where's my steampunker? I've got a lot of writing here. This is a Caden Heads bottle. Caden Heads are one of Scotland's prominent independent bottlers, not just of whiskey but of global spirits, including gin and rum. There you go. It's also Scotland's oldest continuous independent bottler. Uh, this happens to be a single cask, Glen Tocher's, 14-year-old, um, high strength, cask strength, single malt, and it is presented natural colour and unchill filtered. Let me give you even more detail. This is the sort of detail you really don't get in many of the official brands, particularly the more mainstream ones, because quite simply they don't deem it to be important because it can disrupt the brand marketing message. So it's um, cask strength, it says it in the back and the front, and uh, distilled in 2009, bottled in the summer of 2023, the cask type was a bourbon hogshead and the number of bottles was 264. It's been bottled at 50%. Now that's a nice round figure. So it seems to me that that could be the, the absolute cask strength, but they also may have just rounded it down a little bit in order to control the price because particularly in Britain, the amount of customs and excise duty that you pay bears directly to the alcohol content in the bottle. And you don't pay just a marginally bit more duty on a whiskey that's more than 40%. If it's up in the 50 60s percent, you pay an awful lot more. Um, it's part of the, frankly, it's part of the state scam. Um in my opinion, that is that is duty is simply another version of tax and when you've got a whole wide array of taxes people don't realise uh, just how much tax is being drawn or siphoned out of society um, and into the pockets of a small minority. And that's, I'm going to move swiftly on from there. Um, what information have we given here, right, it's high strength it's Glentockers, 
which is not available as an official bottling. Glentochers is a single malt which contributes to proprietary blends. Um, it's a Speyside distillery <coughs> and in my opinion and in the opinion of many people who know quite a bit about single malt Scotch whisky, it's got bags of character. A lot of character. It is a big, rounded, super fruity, can slightly confectionery, resinous, um, delightful whiskey. And the reason I bought this bottle was last year I was in Campbelltown visiting Springbank Distillery, and I just went literally a, two, a one minute, less than a minute walk outside the distillery, you go down the road and you find the Caden Heads shop Campbelltown. And I walk in and I have a look at the shelves and then I do the most important thing that everybody should be doing when visiting a, a whiskey shop. You say to the person standing there behind the counter, beside the till, who's taking the money and looking after the shop, you ask them, what do you recommend? Here's my budget. And you will find that often, not only are they experienced and knowledgeable enough to make really good rep uh, recommendations, they do so in context to your existing experience and your existing budget. In other words, they mix and they, they, they match and present really what you're looking for. Now, it doesn't apply to every retailer. And I do get the feedback, particularly in the USA, that in a number of specialist liquor stores, as they're called, there are people that are just working there for the money and they don't give a damn. So long as they can get the kudos for selling the latest bottle of Blanton's, and um, so long as they can have a 20 minute chat with someone over when the Pappy Van Winkle's next going to appear, their day is made. They, you know, they feel they've, they've, they've done a lot and justified themselves. But, the fact is that as whisky sale selling becomes more specialist, the specialist shops need to be more specialist. Um, and it's not just the knowledge of the staff, it's the specialist shops stocking the unusual, stocking the different, stocking the harder to find whiskies which an experienced whisky drinker is highly likely to recognize and understand. Um, they then go on to their mobile device and check out whisky base or do a general search on the details of the whisky. They can even take it off a photograph now because of um, search engine forensics. It's so it's never been simpler. But here's a really good illustrative example of this. Now I've got to add Cadenhead whiskies are only available from Cadenhead shops, generally. Sometimes there are exceptions. And certainly you will find Cadenhead bottlings are regularly for sale in the British-based whisky and specialist drink auctions. And they can frequently be very good value because they're of no interest to collectors unless they're particular bling brand like like Northport or something or Port Ellen good example so this is one of these real absolutely nuts and bolts jobbing single malt independent bottlings which this is what we're looking for now it's unlikely you're going to be able to buy this particular bottling but don't worry about it malt mates because when you go and check out the options, you will find others which aren't exactly the same, but they are similar. Bear in mind the turnover of single cask bottled whiskey is rather rapid, particularly when word gets out. And word gets out faster than it has ever done in the history of, of whiskey sales. It's, it's the landscape now. So what have we got here? Now, a final piece of advice before I dive into this. If you're just starting in whiskey and you've only maybe got a year or a couple of years under your belt, be very cautious about buying single cask cask strength whiskies because it can be too much for your palate. 
Now, I don't mean to sound patronising and condescending. I'm just giving you the benefit of my experience because that was my experience back in the day when I would buy an independent and I couldn't get my, pa my, my, my nose round and it was complex and it was cask strength and the sensation range was, was more pronounced and it wasn't like the 40 or 43 percent brands the official bottlings which were much more readily accessible and still are today but if you have a bottle it's, just leave the cork on it, leave it on the shelf come back to it later, a year, two years, five years, so long as you store it away from sunlight in a coolish environment, you're not going to have any problems. You're really not, because bear in mind, you can keep an eye on it. Another piece of advice is just start off with a nice, simple, standard, quaffing, simple whiskey like Glen, Glenfiddich 12-year-old or, or Glenmorangie 10-year-old. Start off with that before you, you come to these whiskies. Often, it's the, 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 the beauty's in the detail. It, it doesn't come jumping, rushing out to meet you. It's not homogenised and safe like many of your proprietary official bottlings. This is delicate, complex, to some extent demanding, and you need experience to know how long to leave it in the glass, how long to let it rest, how long to keep it covered, how long to let the bottle oxygenate, are you going to decant it or not, and of course importantly, how much water are you going to add. With this one, I recommend you don't add much. It's a delicate whisky. It's just the way the cask works. It's what's called single cask provenance. You can also get the same effect in small batch um, constructions um, of say 10 casks 20 casks you you get that eccentricity of the single cask influence once you get to hundreds of casks chill filtered reduced to 40 percent it's all engineered and homogenized and you know you've got a much more easy access experience which is one reason why they do it on the nose. Let's finally get stuck into this. On the nose. Beautifully fresh fruit, melon and guava and a hint of lychee and the most beautiful German sweet white, grain, white wine grapes. It smells like a slightly oaky, toasted, semi-sweet Riesling. That's what it smells like. The clarity on the nose is just beautiful, but I'm not immediately getting a Glen Tocher signature. It's just not there. This could be any, any space side whiskey. The, and, and this is another thing is, to get your palate round these, you need to know the signature as it stands and the only way I know the Glen Tocher signature is from what about a dozen or so bottles over the last 20 years that I've kind of managed to work my, work my way through, lucky me. I never had a bad one yet by the way. Always drama and this is drama here but it's different from the rest. They're big and bold and fruity and plummy and this is, this is going the other way, this is going the, going the complete other way. This is light and orchard fruits, peach and delicate. It's intense because it's 50%, but it's delicate in the nose. Tangy, super citrus, lemon juice, limoncello, limoncello, intense, um, almost acidic, citrusy grapefruit rind. Not the grapefruit, grapefruit um, oil. Um, there's, there is bitterness in there. The bitterness you get from lemon pith, the white inside the lemon. It is astringent, wonderfully palate cleansing, an absolute epitome of a mid-summer's end of day out in the garden after your barbecue single malt. I'm going to add... 
three millilitres of whiskey. Bear in mind it's 50%, but I've added a lot less water than I normally would. And that is because this is a delicate one. It's intense, it's dramatic, there's plenty going on. But it's also delicate. And therefore, it would be easy to drown this whiskey if I was to add too much too soon. So you add a drop, and then if you need to, after 10, 15 minutes, add another drop. Take your time. So I've added a little bit, and by the way, this bottle, where does it say it? Where does it say it? Oh, here it says it. The authentic collection products are single casks to ensure all the natural character and colour of the whisky. So we do we not we do not chill filter or add caramel. Right, stated. They do not chill filter and add caramel. So when anybody, any expert tells you, oh no, no, they, they, they always add, they always chill filter and add caramel to make it palatable for you to drink. Trust me, these individuals are bullshitting you. They're patronising you. They're flannelling you. And they're hoping you'll just shut up and believe them because they're experts or they're brand ambassadors. But don't because they're being disingenuous and frankly they're not respecting you. Understand that. I poured a glass yesterday. You can see, you can see clearly. Scotch mist with a drop of water. Beautiful, fantastic Scotch mist. Just freshly poured. We're now at the stage, malt mates. The only way we can prove the whisky hasn't been chill filtered is to leave a drop in the glass and put a lid on it overnight, even if we have to put it into the fridge. If you're in a hot country or the middle of summer. There's too many distilleries, in my opinion, and it is my opinion, it's only my opinion. They are playing games with us. They're saying their whisky's not been chill filtered, when in fact it has been seriously and significant filtered without particularly the chill factor being put in it, but it's getting roughly the same effect. It helps to sanitise and sterilise the whisky and reduce the flavour. Because chill filtration removes... This is a fact. It's a fact. Chill filtration removes flavour from whisky and natural colour. It's why you watch my channel. I'm, I'm telling you things you need to know. Let's get back to this. On the taste. Back to the taste. Little bit, slight smokiness, little bit of cask char there. Soft acting cask. Vanillas are coming through. So you're getting that soft, natural, old school type of bourbon wood. Not your custard brulee type modern ex-bourbon cask. This is a really, really soft, gentle, loving cask, which has just done something so, so different to Glen Talkers that I've never seen before. Um, and this is exciting. This is, you know, if the bourbon industry had their independent bottlers, the bourbon scene would be so much more honest and interesting. But it isn't. The, the whole attitude of the bourbon industry the cynical way in which they pump their customers with collectible bourbons, frankly, it really, really puts me off. Moving on. Grassy summer meadow, sort of hay fields, soft, light biscuity. You know these rice biscuits with fine sugar sprinkled on top? The ones you used to eat when you ate biscuits, but you now you want to be slimmer. It's one of those, that note. The citrus has become more intense. It's almost perfume. 
floral and perfume, intense citrus. The sourness and the bitterness is so restrained. This, and it's right in there's this background of sweetness. Even the array and the layout of the sensations is significantly different in this whiskey. And it makes it fascinating. But hey, I can I can find the fascination because I've been drinking whiskey for 35 plus years. So it's, it's an awful lot. I, I'm not sitting here having to kind of go treasure hunting in here. It's all coming out to meet me. And it's... This is a bottle I'm going to have for years. You can't drink this in a session. You can't drink this one glass of another after another over a week or even a month. With this complexity, I just I just know already. I know that the longer that bottle oxidizes, the more deliciously soft and fruity and slightly sweeter and and changeable this whiskey is going to be over the next couple of years. That's how long this bottle's gonna last me. It is, it's not an exceptional whiskey, but it's great at what it does. And do you know what? The price was very fair and reasonable. You'll find this with Caden Heads, unless you're ordering online, and then you'll find their postal costs are really much higher than their competitors. But visit the shop. Staff are generally showing an interest um, they have more of an array in, uh, of, of bottlings than they had a few years ago. So I think they're finding their pace these days again. And they're also, I'm noticing they've got older stuff to bottle. And that's important because see these older whiskies, why pay the official bottling premium for something that's been chill filtered with, with, with an inch of its life? It's been sanitised. Um, and that they want a premium for it when you go to go to the independent bottlers get an age statement and then experience the singularity of that single cask bottling or small batch bottling um, frankly most of the time they're just a lot more exciting whether it be Cadenhead's signatory on a roll at the moment Gordon McPhail do some good stuff uh, you've got the smaller independent bottlers producing some very exciting little versions um, and importantly, some many of them are not price pumping. Some are. They're too expensive. Um, although we know they're good whiskies, they're just too expensive. Um, but hey, it's up to us to control our budget. Now, how about a bottle mark for this? One final taste. It's kind of really sharp. It would be too much. To someone that'd only be drinking whiskey a year, they'd find it sharp and too astringent, too biting. But I don't, I just, it's there's such a tonic effect of this in, in the flavour and sensation range itself. I'm going to give this a nice healthy 84 out of 100 because. Do you know there's something about whiskies that I really, really enjoy increasingly over time? And that is the honest transparency of the cask and the spirit. Even if it's got a few wrinkles in it, I actually prefer that to something that's just been a little bit over-engineered. Because when that happens, something's gained, but something's lost. And with these style of whiskies, what isn't lost is the element of fascination and surprise. So pop back again for Ralphie Review 1034, in which I'll be giving you more information to help you navigate your way around independent bottlings. I want you to understand more about them. And I'm just going to free freewheel with this because, frankly, on this channel, that's what works. In the meantime, a big... Hello to all my new Patreon subscribers who are settling in uh, with the significant amount of content, not just from Extra Extras and the, um, the Distillery Watch series, which is getting a really good reception as well, uh, Distillery Watch 2024, but on the Discord channel, uh, some great content and I really appreciate everybody sharing the good stuff um, but you'll find that on 
Patreon slash Ralphie. And um, I look if you if you care to join, I look forward to seeing you, because this is an independent channel, and and there's only one group that sponsors it, and that is you, the viewer. So thank you very much. Cheers for now.